Gumball is going to get the answer. Exactly what she needs. They're not landing as freely yep. <laughs> as they used to, and we'd expect nothing less. And welcome back from our very, very short intermission here. We're going to be back with some CRL Sunday action, of course. St. Clair Saints, unfortunately, falling in a Game 5 heart-stopping series to Stockton last time to get knocked into the loser's bracket, where they will now face Purdue Northwest, so another school that I think we've seen Purdue around a bunch of titles. They're mm. usually a pretty solid school overall, but St. Clair, hopefully they're able to retool. I know it took us a lot of time to get that energy back from that series, so hopefully the players are able to do the same. Yeah, absolutely, and of course, we're no strangers to Purdue. However, Purdue Northwest, I think this is a separate organization yep. from what we are used to seeing, so we'll have to see how it goes this time by. Let's do hop into game right now not gonna waste any time it's gonna be saints versus purdue yeah so far so good looks like the saints are gonna put the ball toward the net there christian gonna try to make a play over top there ball is gonna be there a couple demos coming through for both sides immediately so a little bit of back and forth a little bit of shot on the net by kamal is gonna get turned aside there so a couple sec uh, a little bit of time in here so so far and st Clair gonna get in a couple shots on net absolutely let's see who strikes first who's gonna get that momentum in their favor and start feeling pretty good here. Of course, you've made it this far, or losers uh, quarterfinals. You're the top five, which is still fantastic in its own right of, what, 300 some odd teams? Yep. However, that is still not enough, like we were saying before. You gotta win this thing in order to get qualified due to the amount of players in this tournament. Yep. So, like, no holds barred now. Back and forth, though. Yeah, and obviously, St. Clair, they have a, still got a lot of work to do, a lot of groundwork to make up. You know, they got a lot of lot ahead of themselves, but you know they're going to be champing at the bit for that rematch. They're stocked in. Oh. Christian trying to get it done early on, but going to get denied by Sweetness. So, great save there to keep things up at zeros in Purdue Northwest so far. Trying to get some pressure in the Saints zone. The Saints definitely seem to have the edge as far as pressure goes so far. Sweetness got me thinking of a Jimmy e World song here. Oh, dear. <laughs> but, uh... Some interesting player names, of course, on the side of Purdue. Definitely not the most complex that we've seen so far. But is that Zaverwild? Just getting the demo there onto Christian as well. Right back now into the St. Clair zone. We see Sweetness moving on forward. There's going to be one of his teammates there. Does not quite get it to him in time. Saints defense definitely been getting some work done yeah. so far here. Let's see if Christian can get some offense on. Yeah, the Saints either have like 15, 20 saves and the defense is totally stout or they're scoring six and seven goals and then it almost doesn't matter. Sweetness over the middle though from Kadomak. Gonna bury that one home. Purdue Northwest gonna draw first blood in this best of three. Yeah, no mistake. A nice little interception on that initial clearing attempt. Just left it wide open. But of course, Kadomak being able to send that over towards Sweetness, finishing the job and putting the pressure onto St. Clair immediately here in this, or presuming is a best of three series. And yeah, I should say that. That, <laughs> uh, that should be uh, exactly what you want here for the setter of Purdue, considering that you have a little bit less time to work with. Yeah, and maybe it's not the end of the world for the Saints to kind of have a slow start, especially after like running the gauntlet and having such a crazy series earlier. It might take a little bit to get your feet back under you. Kind of get that reset. Gonna find a shot there, and he is gonna squeak it between the defenders. Quinton Christian gonna find it. Christian on the receiving end there, and the Saints are gonna answer back pretty quickly. Great stop there by Christian to keep possession there. Wow. Yeah, that worked out actually perfectly in his favor. The clearing attempt went right off his spoiler. It's like, oh, okay, thank okay. you very much. I'll turn around on this one. And ties the game up nice and quickly. Honestly, best case scenario here for the St. Clair squad. They're not gonna have to sit and like dwell yeah. on that last goal very, very long. You got it all tied up, no harm, no foul. Let's see if they can do it again. Purdue already threatening though. Sweetness is gonna find the demo on Quint in the net there. Now Bomber gonna try to find something over the middle. No teammates quite there, gonna recover, go get some boost, try to regain, go to the mid area. Quint is gonna get the ball intercepted in the offensive zone there. Christian gonna try to knock this one out of there. Purdue looks like they're gonna be playing Christian. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of boost to play. We're still gonna find a way to get toward the net. A reverse tap, gonna try to find the shot, and the follow comes through. There's Quint to hang it up, and two to one for the Saints. I mean, in iRacing, we call this a bump draft, but in in Rocket League, this is just absolutely perfection there. Give your give your teammate a little bit of a push, to say the least, to get that extra that extra speed onto that shot, which ended up turning into uh, or a pass that turned into yeah. a shot in the end. And it works out. Saints have themselves a lead once again, and it looks like they're here for some more as we have Wow, Wait, Gonna find his second goal here of the game. Changing that, uh, that goal on. animation as oh. well here. Like, popping up the trick room, and he's got the tricks for himself. Jeez. Dead center of the net. Come on, do not blink. You might miss it. This guy has been all over the ceiling, the floor, spiking the ball down. And as before, those drop passes have been so good for St. Clair. They send one guy, do all the tricks, get the individual effort, get the ball deep, and there's someone just waiting right behind him, ready to pick up the pieces. And so far, the Saints 
now got three goals. They scored them in rapid succession. Ooh. Another dangerous little look there, but Purdue is going to get away with it for the time being. Bomber trying to play this one out. Going to be denied by Kamal. We've seen Kamal do this before. Is he going to be able to find some kind of attempt? Is going to get the second touch. Might be able to get another contest. Maybe run out of boost there. So back toward the middle area, and Saints will try to reset. Yeah, if that ball crossing through the crease as quick as it did, I thought Bomber Wild might have accidentally knocked it towards his own net, but does manage to stop it in this yep, time yep. by as we see basically all of Purdue getting put into timeout for a second after those two demos come out there from the Saints. No boost in hand. Sweetness actually not going to get demoed this time by. Ends up going up against Quint again. Hot fly towards center field here. Minute 30 left to go. And Purdue needs something quickly to get themselves back into this game. Yeah, so many. I think CRL Sunday, I swear, people just want to play physical. We've seen so many bumps, so many demos, whether it's to create space or maybe get under the skin of the enemies a little bit. But either way, both teams just not giving an inch right now. St. Clair going to try to extend this lead. What an angle. Going to bounce down across the goal line, but not going to fall through for the time being. Still a 3-1 lead. Clock definitely on St. Clair's side. Say Purdue, they did a great job opening the score and kind of getting the momentum going, but St. Clair has just kind of stopped them in their tracks for the time being, and now we're under 55 seconds to play, so it's going to get real close coming down. Yeah, absolutely. A little bit more to go here for Saints to get themselves into this first victory. A little bit of an unfortunate mishap coming here through the Saints, but it is going to be pushed aside. No harm, no foul. Bomber Wild's going to force Christian to push this one aside into the corner. Quint jukes out Sweetness. Still pop fly. Has some backup shot on target. Is going to make it some... Katamak has to make the save. Good on them to keep this within two, but with 30 seconds remaining, the pressure is on now here for Purdue. Yeah, Christian got a great little touch there to keep offensive zone time there. Kamal gonna be there, just playing that pace game. You can see the Saints. You can tell when the game's getting close, they just, they, you change the pace, you almost just like stop driving on the ball. You just hold the ball in the nose of the car, try mm -hmm. to play time, just like Kamal wants to dribble it across the screen. They got lots of time to play with, gonna be nine seconds left, Saints. They can hold on for two or three more seconds here. They should be able to lock up game one. They are gonna be able to clear this one out. Two seconds left on the clock ball will be denied and just like that the Saints are going to take game one over Purdue Northwest. Yeah by all means I wasn't a blowout but it definitely felt comfortable yeah. here for this side of St. Clair with only two shots coming their way and granted Saints only with it. I say only with it. That's actually <laughs> yeah. pretty fair compared to or for a normal Rocket League matchup. Yep. Two of those goals go into Quince, one to Christian and Kamal was basically all over the place as usual in terms of like physicality yep. to say the least there. Yeah, now. so we see uh, pretty even shots, too, for the Saints, so everyone yeah. getting involved. <laughs> Absolutely. So hopping into game number two, of course, if this is still a best of three, I apologize that it sounds like we're <laughs> questioning it because we did end up having to double check ourselves. And in fact, I am being told that it is, we are in best of five territory. So that must have been a, a change from the past seasons yeah. where before it was just semifinal, uh, yeah. semifinals and then lower semifinals. So they do actually make it to top five in general. Like, or top eight in general is best of five. So that is a little bit of a breather if I'm yeah. here for Purdue, knowing that I still have an extra game to play with. But of course, you never want to have to go down one early and see if the Saints could put on some more damage here versus the Purdue squad. Yeah, ideally, you want to go up 2-0. If it's a best of three, you win. If it goes to the best of five, depending on, say, CCA, we're trying. They, they keep changing the things on the fly. You know, they don't really have it listed, so we're trying here. The Saints <laughs> go up 2-0. Obviously, you win the best of three, but at a best of five, S setting up Purdue for a reverse sweep would definitely be on the books. You definitely want to try to make that happen. So Saints, got to try to come out here, win game two, just take a full command of the series in Purdue, just try to battle back here and even things up. Absolutely. And of course, Purdue, no slouches in their own right. Only, like, we're down two goals in that last one. They just came off of a victory prior to playing us versus Ohio State, which was a past CRL team in its own right. So very strong squad still nonetheless. Saints still looking rather comfortable, though. None of these opportunities coming over here from Purdue really seem to be on targets. Yeah. But they still do have some, some possession. Just can't quite find their mark, as the Saints are absolutely able to. Quint is going to get the scoring started off here for the Saints after finding a pop fly in midfield. Yeah, Quint pulling up from half court there. Katamak puts it right on the nose. Couldn't ask for a better setup than both members of Northwest. Definitely not expecting the ball to fly back. They thought their man had the ball. Runs out of boost or makes a misplay there. Quint going to punish it severely. And now the Saints going to take a lead into game two here. And really, really good way for them to come back, get off that long break, try to get the tires under them again, and just get things going in the right way. Because obviously, huge series before. And now you got to retool and get ready. And so far, looking pretty good, though. Yeah, the way that, that last goal arced its way into the net, that could have been like a free, a free throw, yeah. like you said beforehand, from one side to the other. But we do see Purdue got a bit of a... 
mini onslaught of sorts. A good couple of seconds of just shot after shot, but none of them actually threatened the net. It's now Kamal boostless, basically trying to keep this in, but cannot quite get it towards the center. Yeah, it's gonna try. Northwest gonna go for the quick little double touch there. Kamal gonna get a decent little crack at the net. That one's going toward the net. Ooh. It's gonna be turned away at the very last second by Sweetness. So now Christian playing it toward the middle, gonna get knocked back into the Saints. And Kamal is there for the chase. Try to find something over the middle here. Northwood or Northwest will deny it for the time being. Kamal still digging away in those corners. Gonna be a little chip shot from Kamal there. Katamak is gonna knock that one back toward the middle. So we've seen a lot of uh, defensive kind of idling this game. A lot of time in the neutral zone. Not really a lot of offensive chances or a lot of pressure for either team. But the Saints so far capitalizing on their one good chance. I mean, yeah, if this is the way that they want to play this game, I'm down. We're, yeah. we're, we're just kind of killing time. I don't mind at this the pace point. change from last series. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fair to be honest. The, the break wasn't enough for us. Apparently, it's still exhausting us nonetheless. But. I mean, Saints having the one goal lead in the scenario, as much time as you want, Purdue. Oh. You're just killing it. And a nice little lob wow. attempt there from Quinn. It's going to force Katamak to make a really awkward save. And now that the onslaught's still not necessarily done, as Christian is now looking to try and bring us towards center. No boost, however. Didn't quite get as much as they would have wanted. Yeah. And I love those little lob shots where either Quint or someone will lob the ball and they won't even try playing the ball. They just go to play the man instead and try to yes. get him to make a mistake. Try to re oh! that. that might be a miscue. And it is indeed a miscue. Katamak going to answer. I believe it was Christian or Kamal that put it in the own net there. Truly unlucky. Unforced to Kamal there for the second touch. And Christian they're just not expecting it to be there right on the nose of his car. And Northwest now back in the game, courtesy of St. Clair. I mean, that's just unlucky, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, you can't even necessarily... Like blame positioning or anything on that. That's just like part of your normal rotation. And the way that thing bounced was just rough, to say the least here. Epic here for the side of Purdue, however, tying this up nice and quick. And that might have been, the, I guess, the gimme of sorts. Yeah. That might have been able to put some more fuel to their fire and maybe try to make some more aggressive plays instead of just being, like, dumping... Just try not to get scored yeah. on. Yeah. The one good thing for the Saints you can kind of hang your hat on is that even though like, it's hard to really call that a mistake because Christian definitely wasn't ready for the ball to be where it was. Kamal just couldn't get enough. What a shot off the ceiling by Kamal. This man finds ways to get it done consistently. Great setup there by I believe it was Christian and Kamal gonna do the rest. Off the ceiling reset. Just enough touch there to get it in. And the Saints will increase that lead back to one with a buck twenty-five. Let's go say that nice little extra like tap off the ceiling to get all of your resources back, which is perfect play there from Kamal, uh -oh. showing why he loves this guy. Uh -oh. And he's gonna try it again here off the crossbar. No rebound this time by, however. It's gonna be Sweetness picking this one up here for the side of Purdue. This brings it all the way into the corner himself. This is gonna go right through the crease, but a little too high. Yeah, and the thing with this, these tight games, one mistake can definitely swing a series. It can swing a game. Momentum give you all the, mo the, uh, the morals that you need. Quint is going to try to make a play over the aerial there. Kamal going to be waiting there on the left side, ready to play this off the mid wall. A lot of boost to play with, maybe letting him set up a teammate. Going to get the flip reset. Going to get the follow there as Christian. Can he find the double touch? Not going to. Quint there for the follow as well. So Kamal, very diligent. Didn't want to chase that ball too far. Stays on the back line. Should be able to make the save, and he will for the time being. But Purdue, they're attacking. They realize this clock is ticking down, and so are our chances of coming back. Some very good defensive pressure coming out there from the Saints, forcing the player. It would have been a one-on-one, -on -one, but by just boosting back, forcing the shot to be taken early, it makes, I think it was Kamal's life, that much easier in the defensive side of things. As we see another, just kind of dump on in. Christian's going to do a little bit of extra interference. Does end up getting demoed out here by Katamak. But Quint, up in the skies, is going to let it bounce. Up in the skies once again, but it is going to be picked up by Katamak. We have 10 seconds left here. Yeah, only 11 seconds, Purdue. Gotta find it now or never. Quint gonna try to play the possession game. Great, Ariel gonna actually put it on net. They're gonna get the second touch too, so now only four seconds. Saints do regain possession. Northwest not able to get a grip on it. So it looks like PNW may fall to St. Clair in game two, and indeed they will. So St. Clair gonna find that one. They will take game two, and I believe that will be the series as well, considering someone had left the lobby. So yeah, Saints so are gonna move on. Yeah, either somebody was misinformed, or that is the end of it here. Double checking, of course, with the players in lobby since they do have the immediate contact yeah. <laughs> with the admins a little bit of quick discussion but if that was in fact a 2-0 then that is just the gist of it yep. and overall the saints seemed extremely comfortable that entire series with the, the one slight unfortunate blunder there yeah. from christian but again we can't necessarily blame him for that yeah that was just unlucky <laughs> yeah it's hard to, yeah it's really hard to call that a mistake when you you thought one thing was going to happen the opposite happens and sometimes i mean you can only do so much with the car right you can't really stop on a dime it looks like maybe we are actually going to go into another game possibly we'll have to wait and see how things shake out in a second here but got to make sure but 
So far, Saints definitely up 2-0. Actually, might be the series as well. So, CCA been very, very confusing all day for us. But it looks as if Saints are going to move on in lower bracket for the time being. But obviously, we'll have to keep you guys updated. Yeah, it could also be a, uh, a server switch as well. That could true. have debated yeah. us a little yep, bit here. True, yeah. It does appear that is going yep, to be the switch. case. Yep. So, th this is best of five territory. We, we have been found. We are about to be getting underway here. Yep. Purdue is not done just yet. But they do not have that much more time to play with. As we see Christian Whoa. putting on the fire right under their rears immediately. Yeah, and Quinn's going to get the double touch there. Going to be knocked away by Bomber. And at least, hey, for posterity, it should be all BO5s going forward. If this is already a BO5, there should be no more baits. We should have it locked down finally. Hopefully, the schedule is locked down. So from here on out, should be BO5s. Saints obviously looking to move on, looking to sweep, pull off the sweep against Purdue Northwest. And Purdue trying to keep that loser's run alive. Quint is going to find the early demo. Saints, a little bit of pressure. Good little pinch pass there. Sweetness plays it back to the corner. Saints are going to gain possession. A little dangerous pass there. He's going to get the touch, and they should be able to knock this one back toward mid play for a reset. Yeah, relatively quiet start now as we see Christian coming through the center. Does have a boost pack available for some extra maneuverability, but we do see Quint. Good shot on target. Sweetness is back there, however. No additional pressure, wow. so just some clean shots, clean saves overall. Nothing too out of the ordinary to start things off here. Catamac off the backboard. Shot on target. That's on the line! And Bomber Wild is going to start things off here for Purdue. Yeah, you can tell that was disaster from that pass off the wall. Looks like, yeah, Catamac got the touch. Bomber able to get that second touch. And the Saints just a three-man pileup. Nobody getting the ball, though. Ball will roll across the goal line. And Purdue Northwest going to draw first blood in this one, and definitely something they needed. Yeah, that one looking like turn one of a rookie eye racing <laughs> race. Just right in the corner. Everyone's just piling on each other at that point here. And unfortunately there for the Saints, nobody could make contact with that ball to make the save. Now, perfect scenario here for Purdue. You are in the driver's seat now. Can you hang on to this? Can you find yourself maybe a little bit of extra insurance? How do you play this one? Yeah, I think you definitely want to play a little bit aggressive, even though one goal, definitely not going to cut it against St. Clair. I don't think, what a shot by Christian, but not going to quite find the angle. They're going to go off the crossbar. Quint on the follow, also off the crossbar. So Purdue Northwest, thank you to the crossbar, making two back-to-back -back saves. Christian is going to try to go for the demo. Katamak, great little dodge there on the wall. So really good back and forth. Purdue definitely looking a lot more settled in game three. What a pass off the side there as well. So the Saints are getting their shots. They're getting their fair ch their fair share of chances. There it is. And they will finally convert one chance after chance. And Christian finally buries it. Yeah, eventually just one passing play is all it took here. And Quint, I mean, he's been oh. setting this stuff up, getting it past them, Cheeky. and then just finding the open player right to Christian. And no mistake, right at the sweet spot of that crease. Sends it on home, and now we have a tie game. A few things more satisfying than a stop and go and just someone's ankles turning inside out. Just so <laughs> satisfying to watch, whether it's one way or the other. Now Purdue, back on the defensive end, trying to play this one out here. Looks like Sweetness is getting bumped all sorts of way by one of the Saints players. Looks like it'll be a double commit back toward the ball. Saints going to try to play for this reset. Katamak, not a whole lot of boost. He'll have to give up the ball for the time being. Actually, we'll find the touch there. Saints back on D. This is getting pretty dangerous, but so far should be able to find the clear at least. Yeah, they nearly put themselves in like a drag race position, which could have been troublesome, but they do at least push this aside this time. Quint's going to clear it for a moment's time. Not quite. Oh, though. huge. Big demo's going to leave the door wide on open. Katamak's going to say thank you very much. I will take that gladly. Yeah, that is a textbook clear out from Purdue Northwest. Katamak going to fire that one on net. Massive demo by, yeah, his name makes sense. Bomber Wild going to be there for the kill. So definitely fitting the name. The namesake going to get the job done there. And now Purdue, well, they've looked a lot better in game three. And the Saints, once again, got to try to regain and even, even this one up. I will say that is something that I've noticed there being a rather lack thereof in this series compared to what we've seen in the rest of CRL so far is that demos have been tame yeah. in this one. As we do see another shot on target there from Kamal looking for the quick tie rubber, but not going to quite buy it this time by. But like it's only been like maybe one or two demos a game. Meanwhile, and otherwise, it feels like there was just constant aggression yeah. against the player, regardless of what the ball was doing. Yeah, we had double demos off of like every other kickoff earlier in the game. This Basically. time, a lot more measured from both from all the players. Less physical of a game. Kamal is going to try to brute force that one in, though. Will get denied by Bomber. Quint going to be there for the follow. Going to get it past two members. Maybe they can find something, but great challenge there on the goal line. Katamak will be the receiver. Knock that one. Going to get it stolen away from by Christian for the time being. Kamal playing that back line. Going to try to find something here. Sweetness going to be there to keep it in for the time being. Saints should be able to find a clear, but Purdue, excellent job of keeping the pressure on St. Clair so far in Game 3. I mean, it's really making Saints think here a little bit. The comfort that they've been kind of dealing with this entire series slowly starting to fade away as Purdue is not doing anything super fancy. They're not necessarily, like, 
giving them on slots of aggression. Oh. But they are leaving things wide open. Okay, wow. Christian is going to find himself his second goal of the game here in game number three after inadvertently Sweetness going for the ball, misses it, and then doesn't get the boost either. Just nowhere to go. And Without question, Christian going to secure that. Feels like almost every goal in this series has just been strange or weird, whether it's been like accidental hits toward the net, people kind of overcommitting a ball, or just the way it's bouncing kind of being a little bit funky, but something in the air on Champions Field, and both teams trying to figure it out right now, trying to find some way to get this one in. Bomber going to be there to try to make the play, try to get it out of Purdue's zone near St. Clair. Definitely starting to feel a little more now. Get that equalizer goal. Adamak is going to be there. Great shot with that. Can he get the second touch? Hanging above the goal line. He will find the second touch, but no one there for the follow quite yet. Kamal will get the clear for the time being. Quit's going to be over there. He'll find the demo as well. Saints, maybe get a shot on net here. That's a good little shot toward the corner, but will be denied by Katamak. And now Quint still on the attack, though. Both Saints trying to play the two-man game. Is a third for follow. Kamal's there, and they find the goal. All three members getting involved. Tic-tac-toe. Saints put up three. I mean, Kamal's got five shots so far in this game. Eventually, one of these have to squeak in, right? And he's going to be able to absolutely do so. Sweetness, nearly finding a fender on it, but could not knock it aside. Now, Saints, in match point scenario, able to put this series away if they can hang on for another 50 seconds. Christian, going to go for the air dribble, and this is such a good way to kill time. Every one of these air dribbles takes four or five seconds off the clock. It potentially sets up a goal, and it, it gives you a lot of time to get back on defense. Figure out a rotation, zero people are, that's a really unfortunate hit for Katamak. That's gonna waste that was another, rough, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna waste <laughs> six, seven seconds. You're gonna lose possession off it. So Northwest, you can't really afford to make even those 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 don't seem like mistakes. Sending the ball back the other way, it's a time is of the essence right now. So it's a massive mistake. Christian, hey, yo. a little bit of a little bit of dancing in the middle zone there. Quint, Quint is gonna be there for the touch. Sankler looks like they maybe want to put another one on the board here. But it looks like actually they're gonna play toward the corner. They wanna play possession and just kill this clock. 13 seconds left from sweeping Purdue. Christian was literally Break dancing with yeah. the car on the tip <laughs> oh, of the crease. Over. And they are going to seal the deal. Quint with the final nail in the coffin. Put them up two with only seven seconds left to go. Good little knockdown once again from Christian to get it past the defender. And no question, Saints are going to be moving to the lower semifinals. Yeah, great job there by the Saints to come back from a heartbreaking series against Stockton. One step closer to getting their rematch. They're going to be playing, as I say, very good teams will be coming up. Northwest gave them a little bit of a challenge here in a game or two, but actually maybe find a goal there, but not going to. Looks like it will more than likely be a 4-2 final and a 3-0 series final once this ball finally touches down. And there, there we are. St. Clair will close out Purdue Northwest. 3-0 in, in loser's quarters, and they will move on. And Purdue Northwest, unfortunately, going home. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> a good run nonetheless here yeah. for Purdue Northwest for not quite necessarily hearing about them really before, at least in CRL terms, making it to the top four. I mean, there's no slouch yeah. in its own, right? So this is going to be definitely one of the teams we take a look at in like a week's time when we're here for a CRL uh, East Qualifier number two. Yep. And probably one of these teams, once again, threatening a possible CRL spot. But moving forward here, I got my wish. Virginia Tech Vespa is the next matchup ahead here. Of course, last time that we did get the opportunity to play Vespa, I made the comments a little bit earlier. It might have been a little bit harsh, but it kind of was because they were mad. I'll put it nicely. They were mad the last time that we uh, played them after we were able to take them down in the CRL qualifier. Yeah. So I'm not expecting anything less than a demo field yeah. <laughs> onslaught junkyard of a battle for this yeah. one. I think this will be an absolute bloodbath <laughs> for both sides. Obviously, Vespa, if you if you take a pretty serious loss in CRL, obviously the stakes are so high, so it, every player so passionate, they want to get onto that big stage, mm -hmm. and to fall short, and said, obviously not everyone's going to handle it the best, but the one thing about it, an angry team, they could be a very dangerous team, because they know they, this is they, they're bookmarking this game, they're circling it, big red X over, they know like this could be a huge get-back game for us, we can try to knock Sinclair out of CRL, Try and go on our own run. So both teams going to be ready to play, but obviously we know Vespa's going to come out swinging, I would guess. Yeah, of course. And and if we do get the opportunity to go on further, of course, just a little bit of an additional bracket update. Of course, it was uh, Stockton. They're sitting pretty in yeah. grand finals now. They were easily able to take it over Rochester yeah. in a rather dominant 3-0 fashion, mm -hmm. it did look like. So that means that Rochester is sitting there in the lower finals. Good run on them so far as well. They're sitting there. They're ready to go. But it's all down to this next match up here. See if we can get ourselves to the podium and see if we could take it further from there. Yeah, so that's a tough thing. Only the top team is going to qualify from each bracket unless you move it into next week and for the last chance qualifier. So 
not really. You're really running out of room to make even one or two mistakes a game right now. You're playing against these higher teams like Rochester, like the Virginia Techs that are always solid, like the teams like Stockton that are obviously top class. So things are just going to keep getting harder and keep getting harder for the Saints. But I have a lot of faith, but obviously work cut out for them still. And that's actually absolutely right. And like during the Stockton matchup, it was for, on both sides just matter to one or two errors that cost, like whether it be game two, three, or five, whatever yeah. it happens to have been. It was always right on the razor's edge. And I'm not expecting nothing less but more of that moving on forward. That yeah. being said, though, I think we're going to take ourselves a very, 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 very quick very break quick. to get uh, <laughs> this lobby all set up, do some quick um, overlay switcher uppers, and then we'll be back in action versus Vespa. The touch. Five.